Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm in Tuscany, Italy. I'm going to be painting this incredible landscape of a church and a barn and these beautiful flowers. And I'm gonna be sipping some red wine from Montepulciano. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Okay, so for the materials that we're gonna to use today, I've got a 16 by 20 stretched and prime canvas. You can get this at any of your local craft stores uh, or online. You can certainly switch up the size, but I'm gonna be using a 16 by 20 today. I also have a cup of water for washing my brushes. I have a paper towel for drying my brushes. The brushes I'm gonna be using today are a one inch wide bristle brush. I've got a number six round brush synthetic. I've got a number one round brush synthetic, and I'm also using, using a number two pencil for my initial sketch. I'm gonna be using acrylic paints, and the paint colors that I'm using are titanium white. I've got a cobalt blue, green oxide, um, raw umber, I've got a fire red, and I've got a chrome yellow. And again, you can certainly, oh, I've got Mars black too. Um, you can certainly switch up the colors, but these are the exact ones that I'm going to be using for today, and that's all you're going to need. All right, so what we're doing for the first step is we're going to be doing a very basic sketch of our landscape, just so we can get it into some large sections so we can get a base color on. Um, I do want you to be mindful, though. I'm working out in the sunshine, so you're going to be able to see my shadow on my canvas every now and again. Maybe I'll be fun and do some, like, puppets or whatever um, but just know be mindful that that's gonna happen you will be able to see the whole thing though um, and so what I'm doing to figure out where I want to paint I like to give myself a viewfinder which is this because it's kind of a similar ratio to my canvas and I'm gonna be painting just from the right of the road as I see it going off into the distance and I'm gonna be using these flowers as about half of my canvas on the left hand side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate my sky from my land right now. A good ratio when you're doing a painting is to get your canvas into thirds. That gives you a good um, visual balance. So I'm going to come over on the left hand side and make myself a mark. This is going to dictate where my sky ends at my flowers here. And then I know that my landscape drops a little bit on the right hand side. So I'm going to come a little bit lower than that halfway mark over here. I want my, my, um, horizon line to be about halfway on my canvas just based on what I see. So I'm going to come down halfway here and I'm going to make myself a line to connect these two. And then I see that it goes up just a little bit. So that's where this is going to come into play. So I'm going to just make myself and you can see I'm making a messy line here just to kind of get it on here. And so you can see it. Um, and then I want to do my road. So my road is really small off in the distance and it gets really wide towards the bottom of my canvas. So I'm going to start maybe about an inch over here, make myself a couple of, of lines just to get it started. And then I know that I want it to come down towards the bottom right of my canvas here. And on the left, I'm going to come in a couple of inches over here and that's where it's going to finish. So I'm going to start on the right hand side, making myself a really long kind of windy S shape. And it's going to end up towards my area that I marked. The left side is going to be really narrow until it starts to bend around that second bend. So I'm going to start really narrow. And then as it starts to bend around this second one, that's when I start to widen it out a little bit. And then it's going to finish down here by me. So that's all I'm going to be doing for that sketch. So when you're all set with that, we're going to be switching to the big brush for the next step. So you can get that out and just get ready to go on. So for the first painting step, what we're gonna be doing is we're painting this gorgeous sky. Um, and if you can detect, it's darker at the top and goes lighter down towards the bottom. 
So what I'm going to be using is blue and white on my large brush at the same time. I'm going to be using just a left to right motion. I like to um, paint the edges or the sides of my canvas for a couple of different reasons. One, it allows me to kind of get a, a preliminary look at what color is coming off of my brush. And two, it also will make your canvas look nice and finished and complete if the edges are painted. So I like to start it that way. And because my sky is going to get lighter and lighter as it comes down, I'm not going to be using as much blue. I will continue to pick up maybe a little bit of blue initially, but as I come down that sky, I'm going to be eventually stopping using the blue and I will just pick up white paint and that's going to allow my my sky on my canvas to gradually get lighter and lighter, which makes a gradient. Um, you could put clouds in your sky if you'd like, um, but you can see my inspiration today has no clouds. Um, there might be a couple of little tiny ones that I am seeing rising up over um, on the horizon over there, but I'm going to kind of skip those clouds for, for today's purposes. Um, if you want to add them in, you can certainly add them in later. Um, I don't generally, on these quick paintings, suggest that you do the clouds at the same time as you're doing a smooth sky like this. Um, typically, they'll be a lot easier to add onto your sky once, you, um, once the sky has dried. Clouds are sometimes a tricky thing to do unless you're doing... Um, you know, just the essence of clouds, those could be on the simpler side, but if you want to get some good definition in clouds, I definitely suggest waiting until your canvas is, that initial layer of your sky is dry, and then you can come back in and do the clouds on top of the sky. And as you can see, I'm just kind of getting this sky to go lighter and lighter as it comes down my canvas. I'm bringing it all the way down to the highlight or to the um, outline that I've created for that skyline. You can do something like this if your paint is still wet. That will help to drag those colors through one another and give you a little bit more of an even gradient. Um, I'm hitting these sides as I go along. It's making sure I get everything colored. Sometimes when you're painting these light colors, it's tough to see if you've actually covered the entire area. So that's why I'm kind of just going back, making sure I've got everything covered here. Um, and I'm feeling pretty good about this. Let me just kind of make sure I've got all of this nice and blended in together. And then what I'm gonna be doing for the next step is I am going to be using this big brush so, but I want to wash it before I go on to that next step. So when you've got your sky all nice and filled in, which I feel like mine is pretty, pretty well done here. I've got a nice gradient going from the top to the bottom. Um, so now I'm going to wash and dry my big brush in preparation for the next step. Okay, so for the next step, we're going to be using the one inch wide bristle brush. We're going to be using for colors, brown, white, and black and we're gonna be painting the road. So I'm gonna be doing this with a dotting technique and I'm gonna try and get a little bit darker in the middle of my road because I see some little dark spots. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of paint it on there with brown and white to start. And then I will, I will um, speckle it a little bit to get some of the gravel on there. So right now I'm just using brown and white and I'm just kind of dotting my my path or my road. You can use the corner of the brush. You can use, you know, whatever part works out best for you. I'm going to add just a little bit more white at this point so it's a little bit lighter. By dotting it, this is going to give it a really nice textured look to it. And if you end up making it a little bit too wide or wider than you want it to be, you're going to be able to narrow that road later on when you get that grass on there anyways. Um, but again, I'm just using brown and white to start out here, especially along these sides. And this will take just a minute to, to get the, the entire area done. Sometimes you can pick up a good amount of paint, um, so it will um, cover faster. 
and you can see my my canvas is bouncing a little bit that's just because this is a, a canvas I'm using for the outdoors that is manually stretched on my stretcher bars which is great nice and convenient for myself while traveling um, and I just want to get this all on here I see that it's a little bit lighter than I'm doing so I'm going to add a little bit more white onto here and again I'm just speckling this because I want it to be the texture of the gravel so I want it to have grit to it and some texture so that's why I am just kind of dotting this as I go along and I don't over I'm not even blending it I'm just dotting it so that way I cover the entire canvas and then I will start to use a little bit of the black in a minute so I can give it more of a grayish look, especially coming down this center here. Um, but I want to get my perspective correct here. And I almost got it all covered. So what I'll do now is I'm going to start to dip my brush a little bit into the black and white because I'm seeing that there's some gravel coming up the middle here. So this is gonna add to that look. And you can certainly adjust this or you know enhance it, modify it with a second coat later on, but this at least gives us a good starting point. I'll probably add a little bit of highlights later once I see how bright it is with the grass and stuff. Um, maybe I'll add a little bit over here. But that's all I'm gonna do for this step for now. Um, after I'm all said and done, if I feel like I need a little, a little touch up to it, I can do that later. But right now, this is about all I'm going to do on this step, making sure I've got some good coverage. Um, and that's it. So we are going to use the big brush for the next step, but you're going to have to wash it and dry it. So after you get done with this, just wash and dry your big brush and get ready for the next step. but don't forget your sip. <laughs> okay, so for the next step, we're gonna be doing the base coat of both sides of the land. Um, and the base coat is gonna be everything that's underneath all of these objects, underneath the flowers, underneath the grass, underneath um, the, the backdrop of the barn, or the, the barn structure and the church. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same technique where I'm dotting, only this time I'm going to be a little bit lighter in color up at the top and I'm going to come down to a dark brownish green as we come down because that's going to be the undercoat for all of this shrubbery over here. So the four colors that I'm using, I'm using my big bristle brush, I'm going to be using brown, green, yellow, and white. And so when I'm up at the top, I want this to look a little bit different than my road. So I will be using mostly white, but I'm also going to use a touch of brown and a touch of yellow to get that um, initial coat up in through here that's going to be behind my, um, my buildings. So this is just going to add sunshine back there onto the land. Um, I know that this hill part is where I wanted to start to get darker. So this light color that I'm doing is just going to be the area behind um, those structures. And I can bring it all the way down to my road, but I think I'm going to start to transition into green before, um, a little bit before I get there. But I'm also seeing the top of this hill is pretty light. So I'm going to just use this color combination for another second here. And then now I'm going to just start introducing green into my mix. I got a little bit more brown and green and I'm just getting this to go a little bit darker as it's coming down. You don't want to um, lose your road as you're doing this so if you have to you know just make sure that you have a good color variation or contrast right next to that road. Um, so by using this dotting technique I get to kind of switch colors on the fly here and make sure that I have a good color combination or variation as I go along. And as this hill comes down, I can really just be using some of these green, you know, a combination of all of these colors, but I want it to get darker 
as I come down. So I'm gonna be using more green and brown as it comes down. So that way when we put that shrubbery on top, this will act as a really nice shadow underneath. So I really want this to be pretty dark down here. That's also going to give us a good um, contrast between that and the road. And then when I go to put my shrubbery on top, that's going to um, really stick out nicely. So I'm going a little bit lighter as I'm going up that hill again. I just added more white and yellow onto my brush. And I'm gonna do the same thing over on the left-hand side. But the left-hand side, I probably am not gonna need as much variation because it's really just a nice dark base over on the left-hand side. And you don't have to color it in 100% because you are going to be doing all this shrubbery on top of it. Um, so this side, this is where I started that little hill coming down. I know it's gonna come somewhere in through here. So I'm just starting it by putting these dark colors on here. And I'm really just dotting it so that way I have an uneven kind of um, horizon line. You wanna make sure that you get it all the way up to your sky so you don't have any separation between your sky and the rest of your canvas. And I'm gonna go just color my sides really quick here. I'm gonna utilize my brown, um, maybe a lot down in through here. As I, as I can see that there's a lot of brown shrubbery going on down here. And this will dry a little bit darker than it is when it's wet. So don't be afraid or alarmed if when it dries it's super dark because you do want to um, have that dark undercoat. So when you put the um, flowers and shrubbery on top, you've got those shadows and it gives it great depth when it's nice and dark like that. So again, I'm just quickly going through here and just dotting the whole thing. I like to kind of skip around every now and again that way. Um, it gives it nice um, light spots and dark spots because the paint will dry differently when it's thick versus thin. Um, so this way when I hop around like this, I will naturally get some light spots and some dark spots um, as it dries because of the thickness of the paint. And then I'm gonna go right down along my road in through here and just make sure I've got a nice, um, a, a nice line where it's meeting the road. You can even go into the road a little bit. Um, and then I'm just gonna finish coloring in here. Make sure I get, again, you don't have to get it 100%, but you definitely wanna make sure you get a lot of it covered. Um, and just wrapping up here, and we are going to be using your uh, medium brush for the next step. So after you're all done with this step, you'll put your large brush away in your water cup, and you can take out that medium brush, um, and you can just get it ready for the next step. Just making sure I've got the majority of my areas colored in here. And then I'm going to get my medium number six brush ready for the next step. And we'll see you in a minute. All right. So for the next step, we're going to be using our number six brush. We're going to be um, using brown, red, yellow, and white. And the, what we're going to be doing is doing the base structure for the two buildings back there. So the base coat for them. So I want it to be like a rusty color. So I'm going to take brown, red, yellow, and white and make myself a little pre-mixed color. Um, I want it to be like a rusty color so it's a little bit different than the ground that is next to it. Um, so I'm just kind of using these colors and mixing myself up a little bit of a potion here. Um, and again, I want it to look different than the ground that's sitting next to it. So you can see this is definitely going to look a little bit different. Um, let me just add a little bit more yellow in through here. And then once you get the color that you like, I'm going to create a rectangle for this right building. And I like to make sure that I've got a good ratio to what I'm seeing. So I see it's a little bit to the left of the road. I see it's about halfway between my horizon and my 
um, my road. So I make sure that I put it in the right place. And then I'm gonna put a little um, triangle, the top of a triangle on it. And there is an, a, like a little outlook part at the top, tippy tippy top of it. Um, so if you can get that in, I'm just kind of putting a couple little lines here, something like that. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be super perfect because this is definitely off in the distance. And then the next one that I'm going to do is pretty similar in shape. I'm, I'm looking to see where it is in my horizon line and where it is in relation to here. So they both come about the same distance here. Um, it's a little bit shorter over here. So I know that there's a couple of lines that I want to draw here. One goes that way and then one goes down this way and then again I'm just getting the base color on them once the base color is here I can later um, add uh, the little details to it but right now just concerned about the base coat um, and again doesn't really have to be perfect where it hits the land and that's all I'm going to be doing for these two buildings um, you could certainly go much further into detail with them but for some for you know the purposes of this painting we're just going to kind of get a base coat on there and then what I'm going to be doing is I'm, I'm switching brushes to my small brush for the next step so after this you can put your medium brush in the water cup take out your small brush and get ready for the next step okay so for the next step what we're doing we're going to use our number one brush we're gonna be doing all of the trees that you see in the background from the very far ones off on the distant horizon to the ones that are next to the buildings. So I'm gonna be using my small brush first to um, get those tiny little ones in the background. So I want those ones to look like they're farther in the distance. Um, I'm gonna be using all the colors on my palette except for red and blue for this step. So because they're in the distance, I'm gonna be using green, black and white and I want them to look cooler off in the distance and what I'm really doing is I'm just going to be kind of dotting in these little varying heights of trees back here you can certainly look off into the distance and and see what I'm doing here I know I've got a big tree right here so I know that these are just going to go to right about here and you can do little ones um, I do see to the left on this horizon that I've got kind of a bigger one going on in through here. And really this is just a little dotting technique. And then I see past here that there's some back on this um, ridge line back here or on this horizon line back here. So I'm just kind of lightly dotting them in here. They go all the way to my, to my building. And you can have some lighter, some darker. That's why I don't pre-mix this color. I just pick up these three different colors along the way. And then over here, I've got some right behind my road. So that's gonna be the last little dots of them back here that I have. And then I'm gonna put my trees next to my buildings. So for me, what I like to do is um, I'm gonna be using my yellow also here. And I'm going to start with my black and my green just to get everything in place. And then I'll use yellow, green, and white for little highlights. So I know that I want a big, big bush in through here, right next to this building. It does go all the way up to that, up into my sky. So I'm kind of just watching that ratio here and I'm dotting it. It comes a little bit down further in through here. So again, um, I, I actually just picked up a little bit of brown too, so I can make it nice and deep and dark right here. I'm going to do this to all of them, and then I will go um, in a second pass and give them a little bit of a highlight. I've got a tree that comes I've, with a little trunk in through here, and then it's got a little bushy top in through here. Oops, that's going to be a bigger bushy top than it's supposed to be. But that's all right. That's what this is all about, making mistakes. Sometimes those little mistakes turn out to be the best ones ever. Um, and then I've got two, the, the identifying cypress trees 
right next to here. So I've got two little trunks, one trunk there, one trunk there. I know my height has to be pretty tall. So I'm gonna make sure that I get those nice and tall. And then I'm just dotting down. And if you go in front of the road like I just did, so be it. So I've got my color combination of black, green, and brown right now, just kind of dotting these into place. This one's pretty bushy up at the top, so just getting it there, making sure it comes down far enough down at the bottom of that building so it replicates what I'm seeing in life. And as soon as I get these on, um, I've got two more little, little trees that I wanna get down um, by the road. And then once I get those, then I'm gonna just pop on a little bit of highlights onto these, and that'll be it for this step. So we've got those two cypress trees. I do know that there's a little tiny one that's somewhere in through here. Almost looks like it could be like a apple orchard kind of tree. I've got, that's the trunk and it's got just, I'm not gonna fill this one in. It looks like it's gonna definitely be lighter in nature. So I've got this somewhere in through here. And then I've got, uh, I might skip this one. There's one right here. Eh, all right, we'll put something here. There's a little, there's a little one over here. I'm not sure I like the position of where I have it, but. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna go into my yellow and white real quick, yellow and white. And you could, I suppose, use some of the color here, yellow, white, maybe green. And this is just gonna add some highlights onto it. I don't wanna cover the whole thing. Just a couple of little highlights. And this one also has a little bush down in the front of it. So I'm adding a little bit extra white down here just to give it that little extra punch to show that there's a little bush there. Yellow, green, and white is my combination for my, for my highlights. This one's pretty, pretty light, so I'm... And again, I want to keep some of that darkness underneath there so it really resembles or has the, the definition in it. And now I'm just kind of adding little bits of highlights onto this one and onto this one. Oh, so we just gonna make a bigger tree now cause I just made another dot. That's what happens when I look up. I'm looking up and trying to do this at the same time. So you'll, you'll see my, my brush does its own thing every now and again. All right. So we've got some highlights on those trees. I definitely, these two little front trees need to be nice and bright. So yellow, white, and green. Just kind of popping in some bright little highlights onto these. This one too. And again, they don't have to be perfect. You know, I, I want to make sure that they resemble, you know, something that I'm seeing here. But if you know, your imagination can totally take over when you're doing these things. But I've got a, a you know, an assemblance of these trees. And then what I'm gonna be doing uh, for the next step is we're gonna be using, uh, let's see, we're gonna use the medium brush for the next step. So when you're all done with this, you can put the small brush in your water cup and you can take out your medium brush. All right, so what we're doing for the next step, we're gonna be using the medium brush. We're gonna be putting in um, the grassy structure that's gonna be holding up those flowers. So the colors that I'm gonna be using is yellow, green, brown, and white. And I'm gonna be doing this kind of quickly in like um, these little streaks. Um, so I'm gonna put all four colors, yellow, green, brown, and white on my brush at the same time. Um, I'm going to be starting wherever I see it starting over there, which is right below these bushes here. And I know that it's a, a really short um, kind of ridge line that I'm, I'm doing here. And I'm just flicking my brush up. I do want this to look, the color to look different than the grass it's sitting on. So you want to make sure that that yellow shows through. Um, and once I do this, I know that I want it taller and wider as I'm coming up. So as you're coming up, you want them to be taller and wider. So I'm just gonna sit here and I'm gonna almost, these ones are the most difficult because they're the smallest, 
but as I come in through here, I can really just flick my brush, yellow, green, brown, and white. There's a little fly flying around me. Oh, oh it's driving me crazy. Um, so I just reloaded my brush and you can see I'm just kind of having some fun with this. Um, just flicking my brush. I want it to be wider as I come in through here. This is going to be the base for these um, beautiful flowers that I'm seeing off to the left. I don't even know what they're flowers. They could be wheat. Um, I'm not quite sure what they are, but they're gorgeous. I will look it up when I get home to find the exact name of them. Um, but you can see here, I'm just cruising along on this step. I want that yellow to pop because I see it popping right over there um, in my physical landscape. So I've got it nice and bright in through here and I can get it taller than this, this back area if I want it to be. I could even bring it down just a little bit more so it takes up a little bit more of the canvas, which is great. You can incorporate some browns down here and you can see I'm, I've got it nice and bold. Um, and then that's all we're gonna do for this step. We'll be using the um, big brush for the next step so you can put your medium one away in your water cup and wash and dry your big brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so for this step, we are finishing the land that you see. Um, so it's gonna be all the stuff on the right and all the stuff on the left below the flowers. So it's gonna be this big section and this big section. Um, and any little things that you want to do back here. I'm using my number, uh, my one inch wide bristle brush, and I'm going to be using all the colors on my palette except for blue. I might not use red, but I'm thinking I, I might use just a touch of it, or I might use the combination from here, but definitely all the colors except for blue could be incorporated in this. And what I'm doing is I'm doing more of like an impressionistic style to it. I'm not going for photorealism here. I'm just going for get that movement on the, on the um, hill a little bit. Uh, maybe get some of this brush in through here. Make sure I've got a good transition from my road to my grass. If I want any different little highlights on my grass, I could do that and um, I want some little shrubbery over here. So I'm gonna go from the back of my painting forward and if there's anything that I see off in the distance that I wanna incorporate, I'm gonna, I'm gonna incorporate it. Um, so right now I see that there's a little bit of grass down in through here that pulls the color from, the, um, from these buildings. So I'm actually just gonna add a little of that pre-mixed color that I have from the buildings right in through here. And that's just going to add a little bit of highlight. Maybe I'll add a little bit of white to my brush, white and yellow. Um, my strategy here is less is more. I'm just kind of looking off in the distance and seeing if I can see some, some colors of, some, of any little pieces and incorporate them down in through here. Um, I think I'm going to use a little bit of this color down through the sides of the road because I'm, I'm digging how it's looking with the, um, with the buildings in the back. So I'm just gonna kind of incorporate it down in through here, in through that grassy land. I've got a little bit of shadowy stuff happening here. So I just put a little bit of dark color on my brush. I know I've got, I love to skip around. You're gonna, you're gonna see within this process, it's gonna take me a few minutes, but I skip right around my, my canvas. I'm using a little black and green over here to get this um, almost like a little ditch that's happening on the left hand side. And all the while I'm not using a lot of paint because I want that original color to show through a little bit. I've got um, maybe some shadowy stuff happening over here. So I'm getting it a little bit darker there. I've got, I don't have much of that hill above I'm noticing where it snakes around. So I just really, looks like I wanna lighten this a little bit, maybe with my, bring some of that color from the buildings in through here, kind of snake it around, maybe a little bit of white and brown to lighten up this area. I do wanna be able to see the difference between this and my road. So I might have to incorporate just a little bit of a a line here just to get the difference between that and the road 
and maybe same thing on the other side just so you can really see the difference between don't worry we don't have to paint that person coming down the road <laughs> um, but I am just making sure that you can tell that this is a road so I'm identifying the edge of it um, you don't want to have the, the viewer question what it is so now I see that it's a road maybe there's a little shadow of this tree here and then I've got some shrubbery here so I'm gonna go um, yellow green and white and I'm just gonna kind of flick my brush like this to get the same movement that that has maybe I've got ciao <laughs> ciao <laughs> Maybe I've got some little red speckles in through here just to kind of give it, again, more dimension. Maybe I've got some brighter little pieces of grass. I like using this big brush on, on steps like this because I can really incorporate um, some fun aspects without doing too much work. Uh, I want to get some more of this lighter color in through here just to kind of make sure that I've colored this all the way here and again so it looks a little bit different than the the grassy stuff I'm incorporating here and if you have to at any time feel free to wash and dry your brush um, I typically work with a dirty brush almost the whole time um, I don't know if that's out of laziness or uh, or what the the reason is but I like to have my colors kind of intermingle with one another. Um, I'm trying to get some kind of separation here. Now I'm going to go over to this left hand side and do the same. I know that there's a lot of like little grassy wispy stuff coming in through here so I can just use my brush. I'm really utilizing that original color combination quite a bit and the reason I'm doing it, it I'm liking how it is. Um, filling out this composition and bringing um, your eye from here and just pulling it towards towards the front so I'm digging it it also looks like it's like hay or whatever is on the ground in through here um, so that's why I'm really kind of incorporating having fun with this original color combination that I made but I definitely at this point need to make sure that I've that I've filled in all of my little blank spots of my canvas. I'm going to put some shadow underneath here with a little bit of black. I had a little bit too much white in there so some black, brown, and green maybe. And again this is just to kind of get this whole area to look like I've filled it in. Um, I want some more of that original color combination so I'm just kind of mixing it on the fly here. And sometimes your brush gets a little overloaded with stuff so you know if you have to again you can certainly wash and dry your brush um, but you can see I'm just kind of really having fun with the with the different color combinations seeing if I can get this to translate into um, a nice composition here I'm gonna definitely uh, make these little pieces of grass in the front more more identifiable here so I've added more white and yellow to my brush so these can really take up a good amount of the eye space on here and you can do it coming up but the white is really going to give it some nice highlight um, I've got a little bit down here and I'm almost done with this step I really again this is more of like an impressionistic type painting you don't need it to you don't need to take it all the way to photorealism um, but if you wanted to I suppose you could um, but I really just am looking to color the entire canvas and what I'm going to do at after this point we are going to use this big brush again for the next step um, but you're going to want to wash it and dry it so after you get done kind of making sure that you get the full area colored in here you can wash and dry this big brush and get ready for the next step Okay, so what we're doing for the next step is we're going to be doing the colored part on the top of the flowers. I'm going to be using red, brown, yellow, black, and a little bit of white. And I'm going to use my medium brush to pre-mix my color. 
and then I'll be using my big brush to apply it. So I've got red, red, yellow, brown, a touch of black. I'm not gonna add the white until I know if when and if I want it. I might just use the white as a highlighting color. So you see how beautiful this is? It's like a deep reddish brown color. That's the color I'm going for. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my big brush I'm going to get a whole bunch of little marks on my canvas to represent those with dots and then I will use white to kind of add some little highlight spots. So I've got my big brush, I take it and I'm going to squish it in the side of my palette so that way it comes together and is nice and controllable. And I'm just going to sit here, I know that I want them smaller down here so I'm just going to make these little tiny dots down and through here and then as I come up this ridge line here, I'm getting them to go bigger and bigger and taller and taller. And I'm really just adding these little pokes of color coming up. Um, I do want to kind of hide some of this horizon line here. And once I get that, um, my highlight will probably be done with yellow and white. I just want to kind of see what this ends up looking like. Um, I definitely want it to be nice and deep and rich of a color, but I, I also want to get those beautiful um, highlights on through there. So right now I'm just kind of using the corner of my brush to get some little pieces poking out. Ooh, there I see that there's a couple of little just pieces almost sticking up all on their own over there. And I want this to take up a good amount of the visual space of this painting because I really like the, the look that I'm seeing over, in the, over there. So now I've got a pretty good um, representation of the flowers. So now I'm, I didn't wash my brush. I'm just going to go into yellow and white. And this is going to now add that little kiss of sunshine right up at the top of them. And I can certainly add more to more of that this um, color that I've pre-mixed I can add that to my to my brush at any time to add a little bit more to that highlight but you can see it's really coming nice and bright I can also add a little bit of red onto my brush if I feel like the red is going to um, punch it up a little bit um, which I feel it, it might very well do that so going to add a little bit of red and white and again this is going to dry darker than it is when it's wet so just kind of prepare for that um, as you're doing this because this this red that we are or the the maroon kind of color that we pre-mixed that definitely is going to dry darker as is the the actual red that I'm applying right now but again I'm right now I'm using red yellow and white as this as this highlight kind of color. Um, I don't want it to be too, too much, but I definitely, I'm seeing these beautiful colors behind me. So I'm just kind of punching them in here. And then once you get all set, I can't stop looking at the flower. <laughs> They're just so beautiful. Um, so I'm just kind of fiddling here, making sure I've got some real pops of some bright color. It doesn't have to be, you know, 100% red here, but I know, again, through experience, this is going to turn out darker when it is, when it dries. So I want to make sure that I have the vibrancy there when it's wet. So that way, when it does dry and turns a little bit darker, I've still got those pops of the brightness. Um, and then for the next step, we're going to be using that little tiny brush. Um, so when you're all set with this and you've got a good um, display of these vibrant colors, you can put this big brush um, away in your water cup and you'll take out your, your small brush for the next step. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is we're finishing these buildings. And what I like to do is I'm going to be using multiple colors. Um, I will most likely be using brown, red, yellow, black, and white. Um, I'm going to be using black first 
to just get the identifying marks. So I have a black little door here. And again, I'm just making this into a simplified version here. I've got a black shadow underneath this part of the building. Um, I've got, we're gonna go to the next building here. I definitely have a couple of little black windows. Oops, a little heavy on the paint there. A uh, little black window here, a little black window here. Um, there's some kind of little building here with a side. Um, and then we have a double roof line here. So I've got one here, one here, and then I have a side to the building. So, hello. Ciao. Um, so I've got the side to this building and you don't have to necessarily um, go totally in detail but what I'm doing here is because I'm putting the side of the building it is going to actually show the dimension to it you can also use these darker colors to put you know just if you can't see the edge of the building you can use utilize the dark colors to just kind of give you that that visual reference along the side oh i just missed a little window up there and then once i've got the the generic information on there now i just go in for a little bit of detail so i can use this dark reddish color that i used on the flowers i can utilize that for these roof lines there's a door um, a big garage door type thing right here that's utilizing that nice rich dark reddish brown um, I can utilize it underneath here I can utilize it for the roof line because it looks like there might be some kind of terracotta type roof over there um, so I definitely want to have some kind of roof line in through there um, I see a little chimney here so I'll put that little chimney uh, this part of the building back here is a little bit darker so I'll utilize this color so it makes it nice and um, simple if you can carry the same color from one side of the painting to the other I can also use this nice dark color as the roof line up here again and I'm just watching what I see out there um, I'll be doing a little bit of a highlight on it in a second uh, so you'll be able to see that um, so I've got my basic shapes. Maybe this building is a little bit darker. So I'll utilize this color for this building too. And then what I'm going to do to make it look a little like that um, stucco look, I'm still using this dark color. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow and white. And I'm going to speckle my buildings real quick here just to give them a little bit of a more um, realistic kind of look so I'm just speckling them so they look like they're made of stone perhaps speckle 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 and I'm not doing anything super fancy here just actually making some dots on here and then once I get that done which I'm almost done here once I give it a little bit of speckling da -da -da, um, I can start to add any little highlights that I want. So my highlights are going to be above my, my roof lines. Uh, so that way it's going to kind of close it off, look like there's sun hitting it or something. So there's one there. What else I got? I got maybe one over here. And again, you don't have to go too crazy with it. I think I want this to have just a little bit more detail on it so I add a little highlight there maybe a little bit I'm just kind of adding little specks of these highlights just so it gives it again some kind of further dimension I got rid of too much of my shadow there and then I'm just kind of fiddling here um, and then I need to close off anything else that I let me just give myself a little highlight over here um, so I'm giving it one final oh I see a white or a, a 
kind of a molding around this door here. So just these little tiny details that you can add sometimes really add a lot to the painting, even if you know they're just minor details. Um, so really, right now, I uh, I'm I'm really tempted to just keep fiddling, but I think I think I'm just about all set in through here. Um, I know I need to sign it, that's for sure, um, but I think I think I'm digging it. So. What you're going to do for the final step on any painting, you're washing and drying that small brush and just get ready for that final little step. Okay, so the last step to any good painting is to sign it. So I'm going to be using my small number one brush. I'm going to be using black paint. You can sign it the bottom left, the bottom right, or anywhere else you choose. I'm going to sign mine in the bottom left and I'm going to be signing it with black paint. Um, I use my initials, but you could, <laughs> now that's going to be an extra piece of grass. Um, I use my initials, but you could certainly use your first name. You could date it if you wanted to. Um, we're just going to, we're going to incorporate this into part of the painting. This is how we fix mistakes on the fly. Oh, look, there we go. It's a happy little mistake. Um, so that is going to conclude this Tuscan landscape painting. Um, I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your painting and I look forward to painting with you again. Thanks for watching. Please join me as I paint and sip around the world.